What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today we're going to feature another fine product from Best Tech Knives. What we've got here is the Best Tech Ascot Flipper Folder. This is a steel liner lock uh, flipper folder. It is a new release from Best Tech Knives and um, it's, a, it's a finely, finely made higher end budget knife guys uh, there is just so much goodness going on with this design uh, but to start this out i want to say thank you to one of my subs um jeff jeffrey o let's say jeffrey o because i don't know if jeff wants to give out, give out his last name um but he purchased this knife he bought it from white mountain knives and um, had it sent straight to me um, to review and then I'm gonna send it right out to him and I have very much enjoyed uh, my short time with this knife it is a, just a really um, beautiful rendition of a basic and simple classic uh, type of design guys and it's just got so many um, nice little details to it. Now you can pick up one of these knives. They're going in the uh, sort of $88 price range and um, they're available from all Best Tech dealers. You can pick yours up at White Mountain Knives. Uh, you can pick it up at Blade HQ. You can pick it up at Knife Center. Uh, but White Mountain Knives has got this thing going on with the um, discount codes and a lot of different uh, reviewers are using. Uh, I typically use uh, the Love Them Knives discount code. Slicey Dicey has a discount code. Um, I think Kevin Cleary has got a discount code. And you can go to those guys' channels and check them out and uh, you'll find that information there. But that's good for 10% off of that $88 price point, guys. Uh, and I think that at that price point, this knife is... Um, I'm not going to say it's a bargain. It's not a steal. It is just a very solid, solid offering at that price point, guys, uh, because it is super refined as far as the fit and finish goes. All right. Um, yeah, good gracious. Look at this, guys. Look at that handle material. Now, the my followers, my subs and viewers will know I recently did an unboxing um, with... <clears throat> excuse me guys with this knife uh, and it also featured the best tech fanga knife and both of them in the same handle material this g10 carbon fiber alternate layered uh, composite and it is such an attractive and premium feeling handle material um, i cannot stress enough how very nice this uh, handle material feels guys um, it just in my opinion it is probably the most attractive and most premium uh, handle material uh, currently offered with any of these budget knife brands guys um, it is it's just really nice it's really nice it's really attractive there's three different versions of it right here we've got the blue g10 carbon fiber it's also available in a tan G10 carbon fiber and a black G10 carbon fiber. All of them dress the same way. You're going to have the blue uh, anodized titanium pivot collar here uh, with stainless small parts, a stainless pocket clip, and then a satin finish on this D2 blade, guys. Sorry about that. Still working on my lighting, guys. This is, oh my goodness, I've spent so much time moving lights around and I just... It's just way over my head, guys. Um, now, uh, let's do this. Let's set this down. We're going to bring in the packaging, guys. It's sort of standard Best Tech packaging. Um, it's not super fancy. It's attractive. Um, and it's a box, and the knife goes inside. So there you go. Uh, the knife will be inside the box in the Best Tech zipper pouch. Uh, it's a ballistic nylon zipper pouch with embroidered 
uh, Best Tech Knives logo. Uh, it is a clamshell type pouch, guys. We're going to open it up here real quick. It's a dual pocket, opposing pockets. Uh, inside, you will find your Best Tech branded microfiber cleaning cloth, uh, your warranty and product information fold out. The knife will be in a small baggie. There'll be a pack of desiccant in there to keep everything dry. And um, that is a pretty, pretty premium packaging for a knife that is uh, $88 or slightly less, depending on where you buy it. So um, let's go over some specs real quick. This is a full-size knife, guys. Uh, blade length, and I'm going to apologize again, guys. I still do not have a battery for my calipers, uh, so I'm going to be just in standard um you know measurements here uh, american standard or whatever whatever it's officially called i don't know uh you're at three and seven eighths of an inch for your blade length nearly four inches guys uh your handle length is four and seven eighths inch for uh nearly five inches your overall length eight and three quarters of an inch forgive that noise that is the cat breaking something in the other room and um guys uh you're looking at see blade stock thickness is 150 thousandths of an inch uh your handle thickness is 620 thousandths of an inch and um let's see what do we got here behind the edge thickness uh, i'm having to estimate this guys because my calipers are out uh it feels like it's about 21 thousandths of an inch uh, in that 20 to 22 thousandths of an inch sort of range. So uh, it's going to be a pretty decent slicer with that high uh, flat grind. You can see this flat grind rising up towards the spine here. Uh, so halfway down the blade length, you're in a full flat grind, guys. It's a pretty slicey blade type. Uh, your weight on this, 4.44 ounces or 126 grams. And this knife has a fantastic blade to handle ratio. I want to show you guys this. Uh, your pivot uh, or where your blade is going to start is very close to the end of the handle there. There's not a lot of wasted space here, guys. Uh, there's, there's no wasted space here. Now you go down to this end of the knife and look at how close that tip is to the end. Um, so this thing has a blade to handle ratio of 0.79, almost 80% guys. And anything that's over 70% is good to very good. This is excellent. Uh, a very well designed package in that respect. Uh, material wise, you're looking at what is now becoming the classic premium steel for the budget arena and that is D2 tool steel. It is a very basic tool steel, very high carbon content, um, high vanadium content. It does have a high chromium content, but it misses the stainless qualifier by a percentage and a half. Meaning, D2 will stain, it will rust, but it is not like a straight up carbon steel. Uh, it's not going to run away rusting if um, you just look at it. It takes a, a moderate amount of care, guys, uh, but it is a very good steel. What you get out of D2, uh, you get very good edge retention. It'll take a toothy razor edge. It will, uh, it's a very respectable edge retention as far as the razor edge goes. But when you break that razor edge down, you get into a working edge it is where D2 comes into its own. Um, it, it will hold a working edge for a long time. And the reason it will is it is so packed with vanadium and it has plenty of carbon. And those two combine to form carbides, ultra hard particles within the matrix of the steel. So all along this edge, if you could look at it under a microscope, you're going to see those big vanadium carbides in this sort of sawtooth type of pattern at the microscopic level. And that's the reason it has such a good working edge retention. Um, 
as far as toughness goes, uh, D2 is a, it's not the toughest uh, as far as impact resistance goes. Uh, I don't like D2 ground too thin. I don't like it as a chopping um, steel. I don't want it in a big fixed blade that I'm going to be chopping with. Uh, but as far as a folder goes or a small fixed blade, I think it's an excellent steel, guys. Uh, corrosion resistance, like I said, it's decent. It is not fully stainless, uh, but it is fairly stain resistant and just it just takes a little bit of care. Just wipe the smuts off of it when you get through using it and maybe wipe it down with some mineral oil, guys. That's all it takes. It doesn't take any special rituals that you've got to spill blood for, uh, you know, or anything like that. It's really, really easy to take care of. Uh, materials in your handle, again, you've got this carbon fiber G10 laminate, guys. Come on, that is an awesome look at the way the light plays across that carbon fiber you get the pop of color from the g10 um it's just a and the feel guys the way it finishes out it is just it's it's just silky smooth um it's just a really really nice handle material guys i'm really impressed with it it is a stainless liner lock. Uh, it is a nice, heavy stainless liners. They are weight relieved. You can see the pocketing on both sides, guys. Uh, at 4.4 ounces for about a nine inch knife, guys, that's pretty decent. Um, could it be lighter? Well, yeah, it could be light as a feather if it wasn't made out of steel. Uh, but as far as its size, it's a very, very respectable, easy to carry weight. Um, your small parts, your torque screws and everything are stainless steel. You got a stainless steel stamp pocket clip here. Uh, and you do have a G10 backspacer with integrated lanyard hole. And you can see that the liners are relieved. They've got these half moon cutouts and they... <laughs> I do not know what my cat has, but it is loud as it, it can be. He's got something dragging it around the house. Um, that's a it's a very interesting pass through. You can see the loop extends down below the level of the handle, and then they've they've fastened those half moon cutouts. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of little. Um, details on this knife just like that guys it make it such an attractive package uh, package no matter what angle you're looking at so material wise um, it is in there with the best of any of the budget knives and in fact I think this handle material is better than anything we're seeing from anybody else uh, you've even got an anodized titanium trim ring here on the pivot um, the pivot does look like a two-sided pivot, guys, but this side is captured. Um, it, it, it does have a uh, facet on the shaft of the pivot, the female side, and it keeps it from turning uh, as you tighten it or loosen it. Now, um, let's see, what else material-wise? Uh, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty good that knives are so simple, guys. You don't have to keep up with a long list. Um, D2, G10 carbon fiber, titanium, steel small parts, steel pocket clip, G10 backspacer. There you go, guys. Fit and finish. Let's go back up here to this blade and trying to get past this glare from the lighting, guys. The grinds on this blade are so, so clean. Look at that plunge, guys. Um, it's got a flared plunge, but you can see it's faceted. It very quickly gets down to the um, the minimal thickness of the blade stock from the primary grind. And you do have that large sharpening choil. It is well out past the plunge. No issues resharpening that knife right there. Um, you've got a satin finish, guys. Good gracious. Boy, I tell you what. Uh, that glare is killing me, guys. i got to do something about this lighting. Um, you do have a satin finish here, guys. And um, 
you know, it's it's a vertical uh, satin finish, as ground satin finish on the primary grind here. And you can see with the reflection on my thumb and it, yeah. how, how much of a satin it is. Uh, on the flats here, it is a parallel top of grind in line with the length of the knife. Flat back spine here. Uh, jimping that is totally worthless and is there just for looks. Um, it is just a very well done um, blade, guys. And there's not a lot of markings on it. You've got the best tech marking on the front. And then um, as far as the D2 marking, where do they hide it on this blade? Um, guys, they are, they are marking the blade steel in such a small way that... Oh, there it is, right... Let's see if I can catch it right there, guys. That is your steel marking, and along with your best tech marking, that is it. Um, it's just very, very clean and so well done. Uh, the grinds, guys, the, the primary grind and the secondary grind are even on each side. It's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, job they did on that. The fit and finish on these handle scales, guys, is just, it's perfect. It's perfect. There is no machining mishaps on it. There are no, um, I mean, everything is even from side to side. It's even, guys. Um, the fit between the liners and the scales is not a nail catch. That is smooth, guys. That is a flush, flush fit. Okay, everything on this knife is flush, guys. Um, it is it's just so well done, so well done. Um, the finish on the small parts, guys, you know, that little pop of blue right there on that uh, anodized titanium trim ring. Um, the pivot hardware is domed. It's more domed than it is flat topped. Um, that you know what that's a pretty doggone attractive look uh, in my opinion a uh, standard satin sort of uh, machine finish on the small parts and then the pocket clip is polished and um, I mean it really just I don't know what else to say guys other than to say it is just a very refined very refined budget offering and I know at $88 we're pushing the boundaries of budget but um, on my classic Bazon blade sliding scale of whether it's budget or not to get this type of fit and finish at that price um, it's few and far between guys I mean it's few and far between that you're gonna find anything like this uh, from any manufacturer at a better price. Uh, now you might, if you go to the Chinese market, uh, to the no-name brands um, that are coming out of these um, shops out of China, you might find something that's just as nice as far as price goes. But as far as the respected brand names, um, there, there's just nothing that's made any better than this. There's nothing that I've seen, guys. Uh, from any of those other um, well-known budget brands. So, uh, fit and finish, very good. Now let's talk about action. Guys, this thing is like butter, and it flips so well. Now, uh, coming out of the box in the unboxing, I remarked that it did not have the strongest detent. And I have gone back and forth with Jeff. He has tried to decide whether he's going to keep this example or if he's going to send it back and return it. And you know what? As much as he's on the fence, I'm on the fence about that too because everybody likes a nice, crisp, strong detent. But that is not the only thing that affects the flip in action. And this knife has excellent... Uh, flipper geometry. The shape of the flipper tab, the size of the flipper tab, the way it is oriented in relation to the center point of the pivot here um, makes it an absolutely excellent flipper. I, I'm not joking guys. Uh, even without a super strong detent and I can uh, okay I can gravity flip this 
moderately easy, you know, moderately easy. And you would think that if you could gravity flip it like that, that it wouldn't be a strong flipper, but it is. It is a very good flipper. Um, super, super uh, happy about that action. Even though, you know, you may want a stronger detent, uh, I can still go out on a limb and say this is still an excellent, excellent flipper. Uh, the lockup is, is solid, guys. There's no radial play. There's no lateral play. Um, the lockup is pretty much perfect for a liner lock. Uh, the centering on it is, it's perfect, guys. Look at that. It's straight down the middle. Not going to get much better than that as far as action goes. And uh, there is some jumping here on the front part of this flipper tab. And you know what? It's, um, it may or may not be useful. I don't know because the actual shape of the flipper tab itself is sort of hooked forward and that catches your finger. Um, honestly, I, I, I don't know that that jimping is even needed, uh, although it doesn't hurt anything being there. Uh, it's just a great flipper tab design. Now, uh, let's go on to ergos and utility. This is a, it's a drop point blade, guys. Come on, it's a drop point blade. I love drop point blades. They are my favorite blade uh, profile. And this one is, it's modern. It has a high point. Um, it is, it's, you know, it's down below the spine here. Uh, so it's not a trailing point. It is a drop point, even though it's a high, um, a high tip in, co uh, in relationship with the center line of the knife. Uh, it is very sharp and very pointy, and it is very well sharpened. It instantly catches and pierces with no more effort than just touching it. Uh, it would be a very piercy uh, knife, guys. No problems there. Uh, like I said, it's got this nice high flat grind and a thin behind the edge thickness. So it's going to be a great slicer. Um, you get tons of blade length. I mean, you're uh, right at four inches of blade length, three and three quarter inches of edge length, guys. Um, uh, it's just, it's just a, you know, it's a classic, uh, contemporary classic sort of uh, drop point design. And it's a very, very attractive. Um, notice no swedge, guys. Um, out of the designs that Best Tech recently brought out, uh, they did the Fanga, which has the saber type of clip point on it, and it is unswedged. It's just a flat uh, clip. And then this drop point is a flat blade spine with no swedge on it, and um, I think that's pretty doggone attractive. I, I like it with a swedge or without a swedge, and this this it just comes together, guys. It's a good looking profile, a good looking grind on it. It's a good looking blade, and it's a very utilitarian as all drop points are. Now, as far as ergos in the handle, look at that handle, guys. It is wide open, nearly five inches long, in my medium large size hands. It is super comfortable, super comfortable, guys. Reverse grip, it is just awesome in a reverse grip, guys. Um, it's just it's just wide open. There's not anything funky going on in this handle profile uh, that's going to cause it to only fit one kind of hand or one size of hand. Uh, it's a very, very classic sort of handle design and you can see that it is radially machined so that's the the scales are curved guys so you get enough flatness enough width to index uh, the handle in your hand you can tell where it is by the flatness but you also get the curve of this radially machined uh, scale here for comfort um, it is just, a, it's just, guys, I love this knife. I love this knife. Um, ergos and utility are fantastic on this knife. Um, you know, and like I say, you got a built-in lanyard hole here on this G10 backspacer. Now, I, I, you know, it's very seldom that I review a knife and I don't have something, not negative, 
uh, or bad to say about it, but maybe something that I would prefer to be different. And in this case, the owner of this knife, Jeff, totally agrees with me on this. And what I would like to see changed is the pocket clip. Um, there's nothing wrong with the function of the pocket clip. It's a, it's a great design, guys. Look, uh, you got plenty of clearance here. It's nice and flat, parallel to the body. The tip is not too high. It's not too low. It'll go over pocket material. Um, it's not the deepest carry pocket clip. Um, but I think that this pocket clip design is just underwhelming and it, it doesn't live up to the rest of this knife because um, as good as this handle material looks on camera guys it looks even better in person and this satin blade finish guys the the anodized titanium trim here um, and then you look at this pocket clip and I'm like uh, no seriously why did you even do that that's um that's like somebody went over to the parts bin and said, hey, we'll just put this pocket clip on it. Um, I wish this would have been done like the Fanga, uh, which is built exactly the same way, except it has a, a stylized milled titanium pocket clip. If they would have done a narrow straight pocket clip like this, the same size, in a milled titanium clip, in a machined recess with a single screw holding it in, it would have been a much more pleasing uh, and balanced look as far as I am concerned. Now, it doesn't look bad, guys. Um, even when you got this polished finish, because you just roll over here, you've got the polished edges to these stainless liners. So it doesn't really, as far as the finish goes, it's not out there. It's just, it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't have the magic uh, in the look of it to go with the rest of the knife. And there's the one negative thing that I can say about this knife. Um, I want to set this down. Let's do some quick size comparisons. We're going to bring in another Bass Tech product here, and that is the Swordfish. And you can see, guys, they are pretty much within a sixteenth of each other as far as size goes. The same overall type of profile even. Now we're gonna bring something in here from Zero Tolerance, one of my favorite big knives. That's a 0452. You can see it's slightly bigger than the two best techs, about an eighth of an inch in the blade, maybe a quarter of an inch in the handle. Um, and it's a fairly long knife. And then we're going to bring in here uh, a standard for size comparisons, and that is the Paramilitary 2. And you can see that it is a bigger knife than the Paramilitary 2. Uh, as far as blade length and overall length goes. Uh, the handles are pretty much the same length uh, because you know that the Paramilitary 2 just has an oversized handle and does not have as good uh, blade to handle ratio, uh, which on this knife is approaching 80%, which is fabulous. All right, guys. So what else can I say about this knife? Um, I like it. I like it, guys. I love the look of it. I love the design of it. The fit and finish is beyond excellent, guys. I literally could find zero issues with fit and finish. Um, the only downside is personal preference as far as a pocket clip goes. I think it's just a little underwhelming and disappointing pocket clip design. Um, this particular uh, example does have... Uh, not the strongest detent, um, although the action is fabulous and the flipping action is fabulous. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't argue with the flipping action, guys. I couldn't imagine how good a flipper this thing would be with a stronger detent. That would be crazy because it is a awesome, awesome flipper. So there you go, guys. The best tech ascot. Um, I think that uh, Best Tech is just, they're ahead of the curve. They're ahead of the curve, guys. Um, there are other brands out there that are universally applauded. That Their knives, none of their knives are as well made as this knife is. Uh, it is just, um, in my opinion, hands down, the best fit and finish in this budget arena, guys. That's just all there is to it. 
uh, with these new Bass Tech products. So, Bass on Blades is going to recommend the Bass Tech Ascot, whether you get it in the blue and carbon fiber, you get it in the tan carbon fiber, or the black carbon fiber. They're all going to be the same awesome design, fantastic fit and finish, and, and just, if not a bargain, then just right in line with what you should get at this price point and maybe a little bit ahead of the curve uh, compared to other brands. All right, Jeff, thank you for having this sent to me. Thank you to Justin at White Mountain Knives for taking care of this for us. Um, thank you to all of you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. As always, God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.